Hey guys, this is Nick Horton here, the Iron Samurai, and over there we got uh, the beautiful manatee, the ninja manatee, otherwise known as T-Bone, and uh, we're coming at you not live from my iPhone in the car. We're going to get some kimchi and some other things at this uh, Asian store that we have not been to yet, but we have heard there is entire gallon drums. A bucket. A bucket, of motherfucker. Kimchi. Oh, kimchi. So this is good. That's my secret health tonic. It is. So it's not really a tonic, but I, I eat kimchi all day, every day. I love it. It's so good. Um, but we got some interesting news flashing before us uh, on the internet. And that is that Holly Mangold, the Olympian super heavyweight lifter, is now on the show The Biggest Loser. And they're recording it right now. And it's going to start when in the October? I think it's in October. In October, it's going to actually be on the TV. So, uh... We're going to have to get TV. I know. We're going to have to, like, I don't know, <laughs> don't get TV. TV just for that. We don't actually have a TV. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to consider getting one just to watch that. But, uh, this is interesting, considering that in the last year or so, there's been a whole lot of articles and other people whining and bitching and moaning about the, the weight of American super heavy women. And by that, they specifically are talking about Holly and Sarah Lopez. We love, we love you, Sarah. You're badass. We do love you. Yeah, she's funny. You're hilarious. Fun. Yeah, she's, she's, she's got one hell of a good sense of humor, man. She's funny. She's I mean, not just a great lifter. She's also a comedian. Um, so I think this gives us a good opportunity to uh, spend some time, not just today, but I think we're going to talk about this over time discussing the differences between, say, sports and health, and how sometimes your goals in one just don't line up with uh, other stuff, you know, so what does that mean? That means that sometimes getting really good at a sport requires that you do some things that maybe result in something we might otherwise consider unhealthy, like pitching in baseball. Pitching in baseball is bad for you. There's just no way around that. If you're going to be a com serious, competitive pitcher in baseball, you're fucked. That's it. You are destroying your shoulder every single time you do it. So by becoming really good at pitching, you are screwing up your body. So there's really no way to conflate sport and health uh, in a lot of ways. And people do this all the time. They think, well, no, 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 I'm an athlete. You know, I'm doing this to be healthy. Or I'm, you know, I like to play sports to be healthy, you know, that's what, that's why I do it. We don't understand this. We think this is retarded. Because uh, we're sport coaches, we're not health coaches, we're not in the health industry, we don't do that. Um, but the issue is that people harp on how big, I mean, 350 pounds Holly Mangold is. And, you know, with the argument that you know, there's multiple arguments here. One of them is that she could be better if she was smaller. And there are some good arguments for that. She believes that herself is why she's on The Biggest Loser right now. Uh, but there's also arguments I find really, well, I don't know, disgusting, quite frankly. Like that somehow her being 350 pound weightlifter is bad for our sports image. Or yes, something. that is what is preventing all of these women out there to be weightlifting. Yeah, because that's the yes, problem, that's right? The problem. Like American weightlifting only has eight thousand members right now because uh, we have a super heavy who's too fat. Yes, like that's the reason. <laughs> it has nothing to do with anything else. The myriad reasons that you know I will also be writing a series of articles on. By the way, uh, what's what's going to save American weightlifting? Save it, superhero style. But that's clearly so, not it. That's fucking retarded. I mean, really. And I. Sorry, for those of you who are really PC, I cuss a lot, and I also use the word retarded, which I probably should. But uh, it's it's changed. People don't use it anymore. I don't, you know, they don't use it for anything. It's like it's just gone completely left the common parlance. So yeah. I figure you probably know, not supposed to say fat either. Yeah, not supposed probably to say not that PC. Either. Yeah. Adipose tissue challenge. Or yeah. Something like that. Oh, that's true. Holly is adipose tissue challenge, <laughs> and so she's going to fix that apparently. Um. But this is an issue that, that, that seems to be in the inner circles of weightlifting, like something people just freaking bitch and moan about and complain about and write articles about and whatever else, getting angry, ranting about, oh man, look how horrible it is that she's so overweight, oh no, 
all of weightlifting is going to crumble to the ground because she's 350 pounds. Um, so for those of you who wish that she was smaller, she's on The Biggest Loser, and so there you go. I guess you're going to get your wish. But why would she have done this? I mean, what would be the good argument for why... I mean, why would she have decided over, you know, health reasons? Obviously, 350 pounds is just not healthy no matter what. But why would she have chosen to do that for all those years? Well, that seems fairly obvious, right? I mean, like, the easiest way to get stronger is to get bigger. That's always true. It's just that there's a breaking point after which maybe you add in a few extra hurdles for yourself. <laughs> and she makes the point herself. Like, it's not like she was skinny and then decided, hey, I'm going to be a super heavy. I'm going to go out and gain 200 pounds to be super yeah. heavy. No, she's been overweight her whole life. Yeah. So it wasn't like she was someone who was thin and then said, oh, I'm going to be a super heavy and go gain 200 pounds. Right. And she has a very different body type, by the way, than Sarah Robles. I mean, if you meet them in person, like they're dramatically different looking people. I mean, Sarah is very tall and she uh, she is actually big bone. I mean, a lot of a lot of people who have a super heavyweight weight call themselves big bone, and they really don't have very big bones. She's got some big fucking bones, man. I mean, she can crush your skull with one hand. Poof! She can just tear you up. She's like a warrior. Uh, and honestly, she doesn't come across as particularly like fat. I mean, I I wouldn't. You know, maybe it's because I'm I'm a part of the world of weightlifting and sports. But when I you know look at Sarah, I tend to think of somebody who's just like a big, strong, you know, powerful person. Like, that's that's what I think of. I mean, she doesn't really look particularly obese or anything. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that her body type is the way that it is. She is tall, really broad shoulders, massive wrists. I mean, of course she's going to weigh a lot. I mean, she could be rail thin and have no body fat on her whatsoever. She'd probably still be a super heavy. <laughs> I mean, there's really no way out of that for her. Holly's very different, though. Holly's shorter, not, I mean, she's not short, but she's shorter than Sarah. Her bone structure's nowhere near as thick. Uh, so it does make sense that she would weigh maybe a little less than that. Um, but, uh, you know, so that makes some sense. But I think that she's, she's coming to terms with what it means for somebody to have gotten to a point where, like, you know, I'm a really good athlete right now, and I've done a lot of the basics. But now I want to be a great athlete. And so I really respect what she's doing. You know, she's um, it's sort of what Tamara had to do too. You know, like you get the basics down, you hammer them down, and then you go, well, I've made it to this level. Just focusing on that, what comes next? And she's doing what comes next. You know, it's not like, I, I think that there's some truth that she had to push her size a little bit in order to get to where she was. Like she started out big and then she's just like, fuck it. I just got to get as strong as humanly possible and get as big as humanly possible just to do it, to get myself where I needed to be, and it worked. She ended up at the Olympics, man. So it's not like, you know, that was somehow a bad choice. I think that was a good choice. I think for the time, it was the right choice. And then she, it's just for the next thing in her life, she has to make the next choice. And I think all these people who are saying like, well, I wouldn't want to weigh that much just to go to the Olympics. Like, that's fine. That's perfectly that's okay for you. You know, like, I'll be honest. Like, if someone said, you know what, Tamara, weigh 125 kilos and you can go to the Olympics. Like, I'm going to fucking weigh 125 kilos. Yeah, like, my girl's going to get big. Lie. And I actually don't care if I don't make the podium. Like, that would not matter to me. And so that's fine. You don't want to get fat and be in the Olympics and get fat and be on the podium in the Olympics. That's your call. But... You know, for someone who was already overweight yeah. to be able to like play a sport at that level, right? You know, that was her goal, and I really, you know, I think that's awesome. Yeah, I respect the fact that she uh, was willing to take that trade off. Basically, she could have instead said, "I just want to be scrawny." You know what I mean? Like she said in her little interview there that she uh, has been, she puts herself on the scale every single day, right? Like a lot of women can't even handle this. They go crazy and they weigh 140 pounds, right? Like, I weigh 140 pounds. I'm so fat. Eah! They bitch and moan about it the whole fucking time. And they only weigh 140 pounds. She weighs 350 pounds, man. She gets on the scale every single day and is like, well, I'm a super heavy, of course. I'm trying to be strong here. You know, and she's not trying to get skinny because she's got some, like, deep-seated, horrible, like, ah, oh, I'm such a bad person, I don't believe in myself, ah. You know, and I think this is going to be really good for the show because a lot of times, more often than not, I'm a big fan of watching The Biggest Loser, actually. It's one of my favorite shows. 
the fact of the matter is, most people on that show, it's just a lot of crying. That's mostly what the show is. It's a whole lot of crying because people are finally coming to terms with some big, deep, emotional shit, right? Holly's coming at it from a completely different angle. You know, she's like, look, man, I made the conscious choice to be this big for a long time. I could have chose to spend the last five years getting skinny, but she didn't. She chose the last five years to go to the Olympics. And now she's just, you know, trying to be an even better athlete. And I think there's something really important about that for people who are, in fact, very overweight. And I think it's even more important for those of you who aren't even that overweight, you know, like, especially women who really do freak out quite a bit about the scale. Tamara and I are dealing with this all the time because she's trying to get bigger, right? She's trying to get to 190 pounds. Like, this is like a huge deal, like for a lot of women, like, oh my God, 190 pounds, are you fucking crazy? And I think that there's something very uh, cool about now we're all going to get to watch the attitude of an athlete trying to lose weight versus what we normally see, which is somebody who's just nice. doing it for looks and or health. She's actually doing it for performance. Yeah. This is a very different reason, right? And she doesn't have that sense of like, oh, no, I weigh 100, 350 pounds, and so somehow that reflects on me as a bad person or something. And it doesn't. She's very cool with how she is. She's very cool with who she is. That's important, right? I mean, you need to have that first or else you can't move forward. Our friend Stephanie Vincent talks about this a lot on her own blog. You know how, like, you can't actually successfully move forward towards a goal before you somehow dealt with that internal stuff. And dealing with that internal stuff makes you so much better at reaching the goal. So our prediction is Holly's going to whoop ass on this show. <laughs> I wish, so in the interview that they put out with her and the other guy, I wish I could have heard the questions because I got the sense that the interviewer was like asking all these leading questions, yeah, wanting people that. to start crying and being like, you know, and you hear her response and it's just like, she's like, no, I know how much I weigh. Like, yeah, I'm cool with that. I'm fine. You know, I went to the Olympics. Right. <laughs> Every time I was just like, just saying, I went to the fucking Olympics. Um, yeah. So I wish I could have heard the interviews. Yeah, so we're kind of excited. Questions. We think this is going to be good. Yeah. Other things that are exciting to wrap up. Um, we've got in, let's see, what is it, six weeks or so? October 28th and 29th, Chip Conrad's going to be in town. He and I are running a uh, ninja mobility clinic, baby. And uh, it's going to be all about joint by joint mobility, flow mobility, and mind control. It's going to be some badass shit, so stay tuned. We're going to show you about what's going on there. We also got uh, this coming weekend. What are we doing? This coming weekend, the 7th, we are at Hard Exercise Works in Asheville. We're doing a snatch and clean and jerk, like, five-hour seminar. So if people yeah. are in the Asheville area, there's that. And then the following weekend, the 14th, we have a meet. We have a mock weightlifting meet at our place. Yes, we We're do. We have some people from all over the place and some lifters doing their first meet. The 21st and 22nd, we're at CrossFit Easley. Mm -hmm. in South Carolina doing a two-day seminar with the mock meet and then uh, that last Saturday of the month uh, the 28th we are going to be in Johnson City about an hour away at ETSU awesome. they are having a sanctioned meet and we're going to have uh, some lifters doing their first sanctioned meet so yep. that's going to be exciting we'll be in the mini dome, mini -dome. alright so that uh, concludes another exciting period of time Holly, we're ready for you to whoop some ass. Yeah, so kick ass, Holly. Stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll just keep commenting on it because it's fun. And, and we might uh, have to get cable television so that we can watch. Yeah, we might have to actually get cable <laughs> TV. <laughs> but in the meantime, you should go to weightliftingacademy.com and grab your uh, weightlifting starter pack, which includes the Seven Deadly Sins of Olympic Weightlifting ebook, a five day snatch domination course, which is our how to snatch course. And it also uh, entitles you to daily workouts, tips, tricks, and all that sexy shit. All right, weightliftingacademy.com. Boom.